Liberty wins at Norfolk State Saturday 17 to nothing, garnering a big shutout and a big defensive performance for the Flames net, including six sacks, 11 tackles for loss. Yeah, no doubt about it. The Flames defense showed up in a big way, and uh, Liberty's starting to play well on the road. They've won three of their last four games on the road. If you go back to last year, and two of those wins have been shutout victories, including this past Saturday. So defensively, the Flames really showed up in a big way. 26 tackles specifically, though, for the defensive line. And those guys have been beast up front so far this year, and they really got the job done out there. Got a lot of pressure on Norfolk State's quarterback on Saturday. Had six sacks in that ball game. And really in the second half, didn't even have to bring a whole lot of pressure, but they were just getting to him anyway. So really just all around great performance by the defense to set the tone, and then the offense did enough. Offense did do enough, and Liberty head coach Turner Gill says it was a win, and we'll take it. It's a win. It's a win. It's a W. That's all that matters. And challenge our offense. We had to make sure we score a touchdown in the fourth quarter. That's what we haven't been doing in the past. The last couple of years, we haven't been able to score a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And usually when you do that, you're going to win some football games. So great job by our whole team. Nick, you focused on the defense. It was a dominating performance, as we mentioned, especially by that defensive line. They were like some loose dogs that were just hungry to eat. <laughs> yeah, they were barking, barking at uh, Terrence Irvin and anyone else back there in the backfield on Saturday. Yeah, between Nico Davis, Toby Onichi, Chima Uzwehi, those guys were just back there wreaking havoc. And this is the kind of play that we expected from Liberty's defensive line coming into this season. The expectations were high on those guys, and so far they've lived up to them. But uh, certainly a great win for the program. Uh, you look at it, the Flames uh, had not won a non-conference road game under Turner Gill yet, had not won a non-conference road game since 2010 when they beat Ball State. So it had been a little while. Good to get that monkey off your shoulder, so to speak. And now come in here to your home opener with a chance to get over 500. We caught up with Liberty senior defensive lineman Nico Davis after the ball game, and he told us how bad the defense really wanted to play well on Saturday. Last year, uh, Chima, uh, number 52, led us in sacks, and, and we were happy for him. But at the same time, we all want to be up there. We want to be competing with each other, man. And, and so that was just our mindset. We're just so hungry and so violent and just trying to get there, you know, as best as we could. And when we look at the offense, Nick, Josh Woodrum uh, had some pretty good numbers, passed for 208, big touchdown late in the game, also ran for a touchdown. So overall, the offense didn't shatter a lot of numbers, but they did enough to win the football game. Well, I think we knew going in, Alan, that this was going to be a defensive test for Liberty. You know, these guys at Norfolk, they're no pushovers. Yeah. I mean, they held Maine to, what, three yards per play the first week. And, you know, the Flames were able to go out there. And I think the, the positives you look at is that they were able to score a touchdown late in the ball game, as Turner right. Gill pointed out. A fourth quarter touchdown, that's something that they haven't done a whole lot of late. They were able to kind of put the game away at that point and, and really take away any hope that Norfolk State had of winning. Also, you mentioned Woodrum. I like the fact that he's he's continuing to show a little bit of toughness out there. I remember that Richmond game last year where he really laid it all out getting into the end zone. Uh, it, whether it's passing it or, or running it, you know, Woodrum – has a propensity to show a little bit of toughness out there inside the red zone. And, and I like that out of a, a quarterback and out of a leader. So, uh, you know, I think that there are some bright spots to take forward. D.J. Admer got in the end zone with a receiving touchdown for the first time in his career. You know, Flames needs a little trickeration or a little trickology on that play, if you right. will. But, uh, Throw back. yeah, no, no doubt about it. So, uh, you know, while it wasn't a, a 450-yard day or whatever, you know, I think uh, – when the defense goes out there and sets the tone like that, you get a few things done. You have to kind of grit things out a little bit. You know, it can be good for you in the long run. Yeah, and on top of that, Avery Eccles gets his first field goal. Special teams much improved than at North Carolina. And no turnovers after six last yeah, week in Chapel yeah, Hill. So yeah. those things are key that a lot of people may not point out when you look at the score and who they played maybe. Uh, but those were important aspects as well. Absolutely. You go from six turnovers to none. You know, that, that, that's big-time improvement. And, and also, let's point out the fact here, too, talking to several guys on the offensive line, this was a tougher defensive line at Norfolk State than yep. what they saw at North Carolina. I saw Greg Ray the other night, and he, he was <laughs> quick to point that out. So, uh, you know, hats off to Norfolk State. I think they're going to beat some people this year if they can get their offense straightened out. And, uh, you know, kudos to the Flames for getting it done. Wide receiver Darren Peterson led the way with four catches. And he says there was some advanced scouting and good pregame video work that helped them exploit some deficiencies in the Norfolk State secondary. I knew we knew this all along watching film that they turned their side and their face inside and turned our butt towards us. And with our speed and our receivers, that's the wrong thing to do. So we knew from the beginning what we what we capable of and what can we do against their defense to take advantage, and we did that. So, Nick, Liberty splits its first two games on the road. Going to be good to be back here on Saturday. No doubt about it. Uh, you get your home opener in. I know the guys are really excited about that. We usually don't have to wait this long to get the home opener in. But yeah. week three, 
Got Brevard coming to town, a triple option offense yes, is, here, yep. so it'll be a little bit different look here for the Flames defensively, but uh, – It'll be good, you know, get the students back in here, get the home crowd rocking, and uh, hopefully get over 500. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock on Saturday. Our pregame radio coverage comes your way at 5.30 with Nick and the gang. This will also be another Liberty Flames TV broadcast with Mike Tilly and Matt Warner. That's going to do it here from Lynchburg. Liberty 1-1 one one coming back home on Saturday. For Nick Pierce, I'm Alan York for Liberty Flames Sports Network.